you've probably heard of people having a stroke. And you're probably uh, familiar with, with the notion that has something to do with the brain. And you'd be right. In particular, it's a, it's a rapid loss of brain function because of something strange happening in, with the blood flow to the brain. And let me show you that in a little bit more detail. And to do that, let's think about the two major types of stroke. There's the ischemic strokes. Ischemic. There are the ischemic strokes. Ischemic stroke. And the other type of stroke is hemorrhagic. And these can also be kind of subcategorized, but I won't go into all of the details there. Hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic stroke. And if I really just def define ischemia and hemorrhaging to you, I think you'll have an idea of how these strokes are different and how they interrupt the blood flow to different parts of the brain. You know from the videos on stenosis and ischemia and, and the videos on heart attacks that ischemia is a lack of blood flow to certain, to certain body tissues. So an ischemic stroke is actually very, very similar to what we saw in a heart attack, except it's not occurring in a coronary blood vessel. It's occurring in a blood vessel in the brain. So let me draw that right over here. Let's say that this is a blood vessel in the brain. This right here is a blood vessel in the brain. And let's say the blood is flowing in that direction. This is an artery. And so you can imagine that maybe there is a blood clot that forms in some part of the brain. Let me do the blood clot in magenta. This blood clot might form because, no, that's not magenta. The blood clot might form because maybe there's a plaque there. Maybe the plaque got ruptured. Either way, this blood clot is restricting the flow of blood. And we know that this blood clot, we can call this a thrombus. thrombus. Or we could say that thrombosis has occurred over here. Either way, the blood flow is restricted. And, and the, the brain tissue that's further downstream is not going to get its oxygen. And it might die. It might experience infarction. And that's why ischemic strokes are also sometimes called cerebral infarctions. Cerebral. Cerebral infarctions. These are all very fancy words, but I think hopefully they're becoming a little bit more common in our vocabulary. They keep showing up over and over again. And I also want to be clear, most strokes are actually ischemic strokes. The, the numbers I looked up, they say 87%. 87% of strokes are ischemic. Now, the other type of way that you could have ischemia in one of these blood vessels, and it's completely analogous to what we saw in in the heart, when we saw, had heart attacks, is you could have thrombosis, or you could also have an embolism. Whenever they have the, whenever someone says thrombosis or thrombus or thrombi, they're talking about blood clots. Whenever someone talks about an embolus or emboli or embolism, they're talking about something moving through the blood that eventually blocks a blood vessel. So you can actually have a thromboembolism. You can actually have, you can actually have a blood clot that gets broken off. So instead of so you could actually so let me let me ignore this for now or let me let me paint over it a little bit so that this isn't the main cause of blockage but you could actually have a blood clot that breaks off becomes a becomes an embolus it becomes an embolus and since it's an embolus due to a blood clot you call it thrombi thromboembolus i always have trouble saying all of these words and eventually it blocks it blocks a part of it blocks an artery right over here. So this right here is an embolism. Embolism. But either way, you're blocking the blood flow further down the brain. It could cause infarction. That brain tissue will die. And whatever that brain tissue did for, for mental function or whatever is going to make it very hard for this person who's experiencing the stroke to do those things. Now, it's not always noticeable. That's called, called a silent stroke. But, but damage is occurring. The person experiencing the stroke, and I'm not a doctor, so take all of this with a grain of salt. The person experiencing the stroke, it could be anywhere from, well, one, they might not even notice it, even though damage is occurring. They might have a headache, or it might be more severe. They might actually uh, not be able to properly move a side of their body or a side of their face or properly be able to speak. So it really depends on what part of the brain is being damaged. But in either of these situations, an ischemic stroke is caused by some type of restriction or blockage that causes things downstream to not get proper oxygen. And then so you can imagine cells over here aren't going to get their oxygen. 
and that they might actually die. A hemorrhagic stroke, to hemorrhage literally means to bleed. It's literally just a fancy word for bleeding. And so in a hemorrhagic stroke, you have a situation where a blood vessel can actually break. Where you have a blood vessel, I'm trying to draw the same blood vessel, where it actually breaks. And we can, we'll talk more in the future of why a blood vessel might break, strongly related to high blood pressure and other risk factors. Don't want to get into that right now. But you could imagine if a blood vessel breaks, you have all this blood spewing into a brain, into the brain in kind of an uncontrolled way. So let's say this little diagram I do here, let's do that's part, that part of the brain. If you have a hemorrhagic stroke, you have all this blood that's flowing into the brain, and you can imagine all that uncontrolled blood will mess up that part of the brain. It'll, it'll cause those, those neurons and, and brain tissue to malfunction, and maybe even cause some of it to die. And it would also cause the blood flow further downstream to be impaired. So it'll also the stuff downstream aren't going to get the blood they need, because all of the blood is being released everywhere else. And since 87% of strokes are ischemic strokes, the remainder are hemorrhagic. So this is the remaining, the, the remaining I should say, the remaining 13 percent of stroke.